Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Clayton, and today I'm excited to tell you about the number one vitamin deficiency that you probably have that is contributing the most to unhealthy aging. And I'm also going to tell you how you can easily replace this vitamin and totally transform your life in the process. So thanks for watching and let's dig right in. Let's talk about this idea that everybody has this vitamin deficiency. Well, I'm not pulling your leg. Studies show that 30% of adults and 50% of older adults and those with chronic disease are deficient in this one vitamin. And not only is this vitamin deficiency this prevalent, but it's actually really important. What we're going to see is that this vitamin deficiency contributes to hardening of the arteries and calcification of your circulatory system and other tissues that is commonly associated with that unhealthy aging process. We don't want stiff arteries, we don't want stiff cartilage, and we don't want our organs to suffer the consequences of high blood pressure and organ disease. What we want to do is make sure that our body stays uncalcified and healthy. And in fact, calcium is one of those supplements that we commonly take as we get older because we want to make sure we're getting enough for strong bones and healthy teeth and all the other good stuff that calcium does. But more often than not, it ends up in the wrong place. So we know from looking at studies, that calcium supplements are associated with a higher risk of vascular calcification and heart disease. And why? It's because when we take calcium, the body doesn't really know what to do with it. It's supposed to go in the bone, that's where we want it to go, but more often than not, it ends up in the arteries. And what we're looking for is a chemical signal to tell our body where to put the calcium. We need a traffic cop to say, stop, don't put the calcium in the arteries, let's put it in the bones where we want it. And that traffic cop for calcium is called vitamin K2. And this is the most important vitamin that you're probably deficient in, and it's what's contributing to a lot of that unhealthy aging. You see, vitamin K2 activates two different proteins, actually activates a lot of proteins, but two that we're gonna talk about right here. One is in your bones and it's called osteocalcin. And osteocalcin is a chemical modulator that tells your body to start storing calcium in bone. Now, if we don't activate that osteocalcin, the bone won't be able to integrate the calcium like it should. Now, conversely, there's another protein called MGP. And MGP is kind of like that stop sign. It says, stop putting down bone in the arteries. And without MGP, what we see is that your fibroblasts, the smooth muscle tissue inside the arteries, will actually start to lay down bone matrix and calcify it within the arterial walls. And this also happens in your cartilage, making your cartilage stiff as well. Now, once we get the vitamin K2 on board, that MGP turns it on and says, okay, let's not make bone where it doesn't belong. Let's not put bone in the cartilage. Let's not put bone in the blood vessels. Let's let them stay more pliable and more flexible. Without vitamin K2 activating these important proteins, we see a host of age-related diseases that increase in their prevalence. Kidney disease gets worse without vitamin K2. Diabetes and prediabetes are associated with vitamin K2 deficiency. Also, bone fractures. I'm gonna do a whole another video on osteoporosis, but vitamin K2 is super important for bone fractures and prevention of bone fractures in the elderly. And all-cause mortality, death from any cause, is increased in patients with vitamin K2 deficiency. And then when we look at the heart, there's a whole host of vascular problems that we see with vitamin K2 deficiency. Heart disease incidence goes up. Calcification of the arteries we talked about, that goes up. Calcification of heart valves, higher incidence of heart failure, higher incidence of death from heart disease, and here's a crazy one, three and a half times more likely to die from a heart attack. So if you have a heart attack, much more likely to be a fatal one if you're deficient in vitamin K2. And then when we think about just that calcification of the cartilage and the vitamin K2 deficiency and the way we've kind of put down bone matrix where it doesn't belong, you see a whole host of functional problems that you know may not be normal aging. It might be just endemic vitamin K2 deficiency. Remember, if you're over 50 or 60, 
there's a 50-50 chance you're deficient in vitamin K2, and that can lead to functional decline, declines in mobility, increased incidence of osteoarthritis, muscle loss, generalized frailty. So a lot of the things that we want to avoid as we get into our 70s, 80s, and beyond can be associated with vitamin K2 deficiency. Now, with all these problems that we associate with vitamin K2, you would think that supplementing vitamin K2 that we could show clinical evidence of reversing these disease processes, and that's entirely true. What we see is across trials, you see a reduction in calcification of arteries. You see a reduction in calcification of heart valves. You see arterial stiffness disappear. The arteries become a lot more pliable. You see a lowering of blood pressure, lowering of the rate of death from heart disease, and even a lower incidence of certain cancers. So vitamin K2 supplementation is super important across the board in preventing these diseases and improving your mobility and agility, muscle strength and bone strength as we get older. So the next question is how much vitamin K2 should we be taking? Hopefully by now I've sold you on the idea that you should take vitamin K2. Now you might say, hey, before we get into replacing it, I wanna know whether my levels are high enough. And while there is a commonly accepted blood test for vitamin K, vitamin K is a lipid soluble vitamin, which means it's not really that prevalent in the bloodstream, right? Which is kind of a water system versus a fat system, a lipid system. So when we do blood tests for vitamin K2, they rarely represent true body stores. So getting a blood test sounds like a good idea. You can actually get one, but it's really hard to interpret that data. You have to just go out there and say, I'm either gonna in increase the intake in my diet or I'm gonna take a supplement. But either way, I gotta look at what I'm getting in because it's really hard to measure where your current stores are at. Now, the US RDA for vitamin K is about 100 micrograms a day. And if we look at what we trialed you know, in these uh, studies of reversing the age-related declines associated with vitamin K2 deficiency, you're really looking at about 500 micrograms a day. So five times what the US RDA is looking at. And if you get it from supplements, that's okay. Uh, most supplements have anywhere from the US RDA 100 micrograms a day up to 1,000 micrograms a day, which is the supplement that I take. And I'll leave a link in the description so that you can get an idea for what supplements I'm taking and you know, hopefully use that as a way to decide what to take for yourself if you decide to supplement vitamin K. Now, there's not really a lot of issues with toxicity. It's very safe up to pretty high doses. Now, the exception to that is if you're taking certain medications, including blood thinners, or if you have heart disease or arterial disease, you really wanna to talk to your doctor first because vitamin K can uh, interact with certain medications. So, you know, like anything else, talk to your doctor before you start making big changes to your supplementation. So the vitamin K that we get from the diet is largely plant-based and largely in the form of vitamin K1, which our body then converts into the vitamin K2 that we're talking about in this video. Now, a healthy serving of kale or chard or uh, spinach can have about 800 micrograms of vitamin K in it. So it's a pretty good dose. And if you take that, you know, if you had that several times a week, you'd really be in good shape. Now you have to rely on your body to convert vitamin K1 to vitamin K2. So you might say, where can I get vitamin K2 in the diet? And unfortunately there's very few places. Some uh, cheeses, especially grass fed dairy, uh, some fermented foods like sauerkraut, but it's really hard to get from the diet. Um, where we really wanna look for it is there's really one dietary source and that's a Japanese superfood fermented soybeans, otherwise known as natto. And I've got a picture of it here. I've never seen it in this form, but apparently this is a popular dish in Japan and it is super high in vitamin K2. You get about 800 micrograms of vitamin K2 from a serving of natto. Now there's, I've never seen it in this kind of, you know, dinner form over the rice, but I was able to find a couple places online where I got it in 
dried form. So this is a little pouch of kind of a uh, salty snack of dried natto. And then I got this one, which is some powder. I'll leave some links in the description, but you know, the powder you could add to a smoothie or put in, uh, you know, put on a meal. Um, this one is like a little, just kind of crunchy snack, a little salty. Uh, I don't know how much salt is in it. The label is in Japanese, but I've taken to keeping some of these on my desk as a little snack for when I need that salty fix. Okay, so hopefully by now I've convinced you that number one, you're probably deficient. And if you aren't deficient, then there's very little risk in you supplementing to make sure that you're getting plenty of this essential vitamin. And how are you gonna do it? Well, start focusing on those green leafy dishes. So that kale, the chard, the spinach, I'll drop a couple of my favorite recipes in the description, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to start adding that to your diet on a regular basis. Obviously, plenty of reasons to get more dark leafy greens. Now, a little hint here, cooking them in oil is a good way to enhance the bioavailability of vitamin K2. It's a, or sorry, vitamin K, it's a lipid soluble vitamin. So cooking it in oil kind of helps to release some of that vitamin from the plant itself so that you're able to absorb it. Try the natto. I'll leave some links in the description. Hopefully you find it to be an interesting snack similar to me. Um, but regardless, the easiest way is just to get a supplement. And I like a supplement that's got about a thousand micrograms of K2 in it, as well as some K1. I wanna make sure that I'm getting that on a regular basis because I, for one, am convinced of the health benefits of this. And I wanna make sure my calcium ends up exactly where I want it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next time.